Hi there, I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, today's question comes from a homeowner who wants to know, Angela, can you tell us the quickest, most effective, most efficient, easiest way to clean out one of those big garage freezers? Okay, I love this question because this is one of those tasks that nobody really enjoys doing. And if you want to hire a house cleaner, a lot of times you can pay them an extra 30 to 50 bucks and they can do this project for you. But if you want to do it yourself, it's going to take you probably three or four hours. So if you have three or four hours to do it, I will tell you the easiest, quickest, most effective, most efficient way to get that done. You're going to need a couple of things. One of the things that you're going to need is a rubber spatula that is plastic and it's hard so that you can scrape some of that ice out because you will be doing some of that manually. Then you're gonna need a cookie sheet or a baking sheet so that you can scrape the ice onto it once you scrape that out of your freezer. Then the other thing that you're going to need are some towels. As the ice melts, you're gonna to have to wipe the bottom of that out unless you have a drain at the bottom that you can hook to a garden hose and you can let that drain naturally. Okay, another thing you're going to need are some coolers to put your food inside while the freezer itself is thawing out. Now, if you are paying somebody to do this, you want to make sure that they understand, do you want them to throw out the expired food or are they just rearranging the food? And if you're a house cleaner and you've been paid to do it, make sure you ask your customer this question. You don't want to be tossing food they think they're saving. Okay, so having decided and discussed all of that, the first thing that you want to do is clean the area around the freezer and we're going to scoot that freezer out and we're going to unplug it because nothing good happens if it's still plugged inside because nothing is going to melt and we want to melt all of that really thick ice that has generated from opening the freezer door and standing there with the freezer door open. All right, so now you're outside in your garage. You've picked a beautiful day outside. The sun is shining. It's a nice time for you to go ahead and defrost that freezer. So you're gonna pull out all of your coolers and you wanna get a garbage can and pull a garbage can. If you got those big garbage can bins, pull one of those over because as you toss stuff, it goes right in the trash. Okay, so now that you have all of your coolers open, unload that freezer as fast as possible. You don't want some lag time between the time that you have your freezer door open and your freezer food is inside those coolers. So you wanna make sure you get that food in there, transfer it as quick as possible. Now, this is a good time if you're the homeowner to decide what of these items of food that you want to eat in the next few weeks or few days, because that way it will allow you to thaw them out and then use them so that you're recycling the food that's inside your freezer. All right, so now you've unplugged your freezer, you've taken all the food out, and now there's just a great big empty freezer thick with ice. Ooh, I know, it takes a while for it to melt. Now, if it's a nice, beautiful day outside, and you have the time, you can just let it melt naturally. All of your food is already inside coolers. It's frozen. It's going to stay cool for a few hours. So you're fine. Go do something else. Come back in three or four hours and clean out your freezer. Now, if you're in a hurry, like let's say that you are a house cleaner and you are at a customer's house and you don't have three or four hours, the alternative to this method of letting it just thaw out naturally and drain is you can grab a hairdryer. And you want to make sure that the hairdryer is plugged into an extension cord that is grounded in a GFI outlet. And you want to make sure that the cord does not get wet. But you can go inside the freezer and you can blow on the hottest setting of the hairdryer. You can blow the freezer and it will melt that ice. Now, it's not a quick process. It's still going to take you 30 to 40 minutes to do that if the ice is really super thick, which I have seen in lots and lots of freezers. Okay, so having said that, whether you use a hair dryer to melt the ice or whether you let it thaw naturally, there will become chunks of ice that are sort of loose. And when they're sort of loose, you want to take that rubber spatula and you want to give it a little push. And you want to make sure that you don't scrape the little wiring or the little tubes that are inside the freezer. Because if you do, you can damage them. And that's one of the reasons we use a rubber spatula is because we do not want to damage the freezer elements with the spatula. This is just to chunk the ice so that it loosens it up and it falls to the next level and you can scrape it out. Once you've loosened all that up, 
scrape it out, dump it out on the sidewalk, or if you're in the, the driveway, you can dump it out in the driveway. That's fine, it's just water, it's gonna melt. Okay, once you have cleared out the entire freezer, then you wanna take your towel and you wanna wipe all of the loose extra water out. So now it's clean, it's dry, you're ready to go back to packing the freezer. Now, before you pack the freezer, this is a really good time to sanitize the inside of the freezer because probably a lot of gunk and buildup, although it's only ice, there's probably some kind of contamination or bacteria that's in there. So you wanna use a bacterial remover, and that might be something like vinegar and water with a little bit of dishwashing soap. That's gonna clean the inside of the freezer, wipe it down, and now you're ready to put your food back. So when you get ready to put your food back, my suggestion is this. If you have plastic tubs with lids, it's way easier to put like items in a plastic tub with a lid so that it stores and stacks nicely instead of having weird, random, different size packages that are all just mooshed on top of each other. So if you have storage stacking bins, it makes stacking a freezer so easy. And it makes it super easy when you decide you're gonna defrost it next time. You just pull out those stackable bins and stick those inside a cooler. All right, so if you're gonna do that, all like items go in a plastic bin. So all of your frozen vegetables go in a plastic bin with a snap-on lid. All of your breads and your pastries go in a plastic bin with a snap-on lid. All of your fishes go inside a plastic bin with a snap-on lid. All of your chicken and poultry go in a container with a snap-on lid. And so you get my point. Everything is categorized so that you can really quickly go, oh, there's the chicken, there's the fish, there are the vegetables. And it's very easy to identify where in your freezer things are. So we wanna put everything back as neatly and as organized as possible so that it's easy if you are the house cleaner, so that it's easy for the homeowner. And if you are the homeowner, so that you can access that really quickly. Another reason for the stackable bins is it also makes inventory super easy. You can look in there really quickly and say, I'm out of breads and pastries. That's on your shopping list then for your next grocery store run, right? So it makes it really easy. Once you've packed everything back inside your freezer, then you wanna plug it in and you wanna push it back and reorganize it where it goes. Then you'll wanna wipe out the insides of the coolers that you just used so that the coolers are clean for your next use. Then you wanna put all your coolers back you want to put your cookie tray and your plastic scraper back. Put your towels in the washing machine because you're done with those and put your hair dryer away if you've used a hair dryer. So this is a little process and like I say it is not a fast process. The whole process from beginning to end takes three or four hours. So if you're doing a super Saturday cleaning this is a perfect day to do that so that you can start the process and while it's defrosting and all of that ice is melting, you can go do other household chores. And then when you come back, you can pick up where you left off and do little bits of it or check on it every hour or so and see how much ice is melting. Use the little scraper and knock some of that loose. So anyway, that is how you defrost a freezer. That is the quickest, easiest, most effective and efficient way to do it. And like I said, if you pick a lovely day outside, you have the elements of the outside helping you to melt that ice. You don't want to pick 20 degree weather out in the wintertime because you open the freezer and everything stays frozen. Nothing defrosts. So pick a nice summer day to do that. And the rule of thumb is you want to defrost your freezer about three times a year. So if you scatter that throughout the year in nice summer days or spring days when the weather is nice, you can do that about three times a year and it doesn't build up and it doesn't get icky. So that's how to do it. Alrighty, I hope that helps. And until we meet again, Leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.